Hello and welcome to Lofty Pursuits and Public Displays of Confection in Tallahassee, Florida. I'm Greg. Today we're going to take a step back from candy making and we're going to cover the New York Egg Cream, a chocolate milk and seltzer soda that contains neither egg nor cream. Since March 15th is National Egg Cream Day, we thought this was the perfect time to do a video on an egg cream. And of course, an egg cream is one of those perfect drinks that can only be had at a soda fountain. Lofty Pursuits is more than just a candy store. We have a full-service soda fountain in the middle of it, too. We also sell toys. We also serve breakfast. Of course, the story of a New York egg cream begins in New York City. The egg cream comes from a mixture of theater, soda fountain history, and New York City. So let's go to where soda started in New York. I'm standing on the corner of Water and Wall Street, the heart of New York City's financial district. And behind me was a coffee house called the Tauntaun. It was a place of financial trade. It was a place where all sorts of business took place. It was an upscale restaurant of its time. And it was also the location of the first place you could get effervescent water that was man-made in New York City. Before this point, all the carbonated water you can get, you either had to go to a natural spring that naturally carbonated it, or you had to get it bottled in with bad corks, bottled like champagne is now, but the odds of it getting to you was difficult and it was very, very expensive. So some entrepreneurs felt they could man-make this expensive drink and put it in the heart of the trading district of New York City. And in 1809, that's exactly what they did. Their technology wasn't perfect and the product didn't catch on, at least not at first. But every carbonated drink, including the egg cream, can trace its roots back to this very location, back in 1809. And while man-made carbonated water existed in other cities and other places, it expanded like crazy in New York City. And that was because of St. Patrick's Cathedral. So the story of the origin of the egg cream has a couple of parts. Part one, where it started. Part two, why it started. And it started in New York City because of this place, St. Patrick's Cathedral. You see, St. Patrick's Cathedral was under construction from the first decade of the 1800s to about 1850. And during that time, they made tons and tons of marble dust that they had to get rid of. Well, some entrepreneurs realized if you dissolved marble dust into sulfuric acid, it would produce carbon dioxide. And that's how they carbonated the sodas. Because this thing was under construction, soda water was cheap, and New York City became the center of the development of the American soda fountain. Now the next part of this is downtown on 2nd Avenue, and that's where the egg cream started. And it started because of the theater district that was down there. Now this theater here on 2nd Avenue is important. This used to be a Yiddish theater. Stop has been playing here for years, but in the 1890s, you would come here for performance done in the language Yiddish, a traditional Jewish language that was very popular for theater in this Jewish neighborhood. And there were theaters like this all over this part of New York. There were also lots of them in Paris, France. And one performance, Boris Tomaszewski, who came backwards and forwards between the two countries to perform, came here after having a drink in Paris that he wanted to have duplicated. And for that drink to be duplicated, he went across the street to his local candy store to try to get it done. In most parts of the country, the soda fountain tradition is connected with the drugstore tradition or the uh, department store tradition. But in New York City, soda fountains were standalone and they were called candy shops. They were this unique retail thing that later developed into the bodega or the corner store here. They were in every neighborhood. They had a soda fountain. They sold ice cream. They sold eggs. They sold newspapers. They sold cigarettes. They sold lots of things in season. When I was growing up, there was one near my house called Chodish's. It sold toys or yo-yos or kites. Actually, the existence of that candy store is why Lofty Pursuits is what it is. The combination of ice cream and toys and candy were directly influenced from the New York tradition of the soda fountain. And right over here, Louis Astor had one in the 1890s. And starting in the 1890s, he developed a chocolate syrup that he made an egg cream out of. And that's the New York egg cream. This is where it was developed right here on the corner of 7th Street and 2nd Avenue here in New York. Before I go on, let me point out that the origin of the egg cream is in a lot of dispute. There were drinks in the day made with actual eggs and cream. Perhaps this is a cheaper version of it. It could come from the word ekt, because that means pure in Yiddish. But the story I like is that this Boris, the actor, came across the street looking for a drink called a chocolat et creme, which is something he picked up in Paris. And if you say that with a bad Brooklyn accent, you're asking for a chocolate egg cream. 
And Louis's store had competitors. One block down was a gem spa, and it's still standing. You can even find another candy shop just a couple of blocks down St. Mark's called Ray's on Avenue A that makes a great egg cream. Now, the gem spa is kind of important for its name. Spas in its name. The old soda fountains actually were considered health food stores. You were getting the seltzer water because it was man-made natural spring water. And for the spring water, what spring did you want? They each had different minerals in it. Scientists had figured out what minerals were in the springs, and they'd add it to your bubbly water to give you supposedly the same health qualities that you'd get to going to classic springs like Spa in Belgium and Seltzer in Germany. You may also recognize the Gem Spa because it was the backdrop for that classic photo of the New York Dolls. Uh, and if you don't know who the New York Dolls are, Google. They're what led into punk and glam rock and their great band. Now, Louis Astor made his own syrup, and it was a secret recipe he took with him to his grave. But it was very, very successful. He ended up opening five candy stores between Brooklyn and Manhattan, and he made his fortune that way. For those of you who know egg creams, you may be asking, why I haven't mentioned Fox's You Bet chocolate syrup. A lot of people think that without You Bet, it isn't an egg cream. But the fact is, for most of time, it was a great egg cream, and it was made without You Bet. The soda fountains were tiny mom-and-pop operations, and they bought their syrup from whoever usually was closest. There were neighbors in the neighborhoods who made it and sold it to three or four soda fountains. There were a couple of distributors who went around. And then there was a man who said, I think I can take over the soda industry in New York City, and I think I can make money off it. And in America, we call that racketeering, and he started a racket, a soda fountain syrup racket. His name was Harry S. Dulwich, and he was a lawyer who said that he could make these syrup companies a lot of money. There were five big syrup companies in New York City, and he got them all but one under his belt, saying he was going to divide up territories and put all the little people out of business. Some stores he got by threatening them. Other distributors he destroyed by saying their products were unsafe. A lot of places he just followed them around with a truck, and he made sure he sold the syrup for half the price of the other ones, so he put them out of business because they could never make syrup that cheap. He lost money until they went out of business. And this, my friends, is called racketeering and it's illegal. He charged the syrup makers that survived, the ones he worked with, $6 a truckload for every truckload they delivered of syrup in the area, and they divided New York City into territories so none of the syrup makers were competing with each other so they could drive the price of the syrup up. The stores that made their own syrups, like Louis Astor's, were not affected by this. But a lot of places it affected tremendously. And when the court case happened, soda fountain companies, the major syrup distributors in New York City, shut down one after another. People went to prison. There was only one survivor. That's Fox's. You see, Fox's isn't necessarily the chocolate syrup or the egg cream. It's the last man standing of a racketeering situation that they participated in. And they were actually given court orders not to compete in certain ways in the soda fountain industry. Now, if you ask me where to go in New York City for a good egg cream, I would either say Ray's on Avenue A, right off St. Mark's, and that's because it reminds me of a soda fountain of when I was a kid, or you can go to the Lexington Avenue candy store that's a step back in time. They've been continuously operated since 1925, and they're the only old place that still makes their own fountain syrups, and they make their own chocolate syrup to make an excellent egg cream. It's the place I go when I want to get a treat in New York City. Now it's time for us to make an egg cream, and we've got to start with the syrup. This recipe will make about 35 centiliters or 12 fluid ounces of syrup, enough for a couple of good egg creams. And we're giving you two recipes here, a simple one that I'm using in this video that was designed around ingredients you probably have in your kitchen, and another one by Anton Nocito, which is a wonderful recipe from his book, Make Your Own Soda. And you should check that out. There's a link to that in the description, too. Into a pot, we're adding the sugar, the water, and the salt, and we're stirring them all to dissolve. The sugar and water will make a simple syrup. The salt is just there to make the cocoa taste a little better. Like most soda fountain recipes, these things are affected by air pressure and temperature. You're going to have to play with this a little bit. You may need to have your syrup cook a little longer or put a little bit more cocoa in it to your taste. But I think you're going to find this simple recipe just the basis of a very good egg cream. And once you've tried the base recipe, please feel free to experiment. 
add a few t teaspoons of uh, chocolate chips or a square of baker's chocolate to this or do something else and if you find a good new invention please post the recipe here in the comments of this video it took a few minutes for this pot of water to hit a rolling boil and now we're adding the cocoa powder it's very important to have a whisk and to whisk this in you need to get it in completely and evenly sprinkle it lightly on the top you have two goals here. One, you don't want the cocoa powder to clump. And two, the cocoa powder actually needs to cook in the boiling water for a bit. Make sure you maintain a boil for at least a minute, minute and a half. You can actually go too far and burn the chocolate. So I would recommend not going over a minute and a half. Let the syrup cool a bit, maybe to 110 degrees. In other words, you know, warm temperature from a sink type temperature. And then add the vanilla extract. If you add it too soon, it's not going to work really well. It's going to burn off and you're not going to have the benefits of the vanilla. If you didn't whisk it well, you may have some clumps. You may want to use a strainer at this stage, but pour it off into another container. I'm using a plastic container, so I had to let this cool quite a bit before I poured it in or I'd risk melting the plastic. If you're using a glass container, you can pour it in a little warmer. In any event, chill this and it should thicken up and you should end up with a wonderful chocolate syrup. To make a great egg cream, everything has to be really cold. I've kept the milk and the seltzer in a bucket of ice until it got particularly frigid. And I'm using some whole milk that came from a local dairy. And I'm putting in about four ounces of whole milk. And then I'm filling up the glass almost all the way with seltzer. If you don't have a device like a soda stream, I recommend small bottles of seltzer so that when you open it up, it'll be particularly carbonated. If the seltzer goes flat, the egg cream does too. This is where it's important to have a round-sided glass. I'm going to put in about two ounces of the chocolate syrup, and then I'm going to scrape the sides of it up. This does two things. It makes a white head on top, and it mixes the chocolate evenly from the top to the bottom. If you've done it right, you get a thick white head on top of a dark chocolate soda. The white head should be separate from the soda, the head itself will be a little bit bitter because it has no sweetener in it, and it'll contrast with the sweet chocolate perfectly. And all that's left is to enjoy it, and you have to enjoy it quickly, because egg creams don't last more than a couple of minutes, so they're one of these drinks you really have to get at a soda fountain or make for yourself. It's not something you can save, it's something you have to enjoy in the moment. And you know that you've made it right if there's a little bit of head left that's passed on and survived you drinking the egg cream. It's sort of the final test. And it all comes back around to that little candy store that was owned by Ben Chodish in my neighborhood, where I used to buy toys and comic books. Because one day I was hiding behind the comic spinner trying to read as many comic books as I could before Ben Chodish threw me out. And he was having an argument with a lady about the best way to make an egg cream. And they must have made a ton of egg creams that day, going back and forth and discussing quite argumentatively how it should be made and I read a ton of comics but this showed me a couple of things one people are passionate about their egg creams and two part of the art of an egg cream is arguing about the best way to make it because I was afraid of getting kicked out of Ben's store I paid close attention to the conversation and I still remember his tips on making an egg cream now, many years later, about three years ago, a wonderful couple named Beverly and Dr. Leonard Kane came into my shop, and the two of them complimented me on my egg creams. They said they hadn't had such a good one since a little candy store closed down in Brooklyn that was downstairs from where they lived. It ends up they lived over Ben Chodish's shop, and I was being compared with what I considered the gold standard of egg creams, and I still smile about this to th that to this day. And because of that, I started National Egg Cream Day, and it's celebrated on March 15th, Ben Chodish's birthday. And I ask you to celebrate it with me by going out and getting an egg cream or making an egg cream for yourself with you bet syrup you can buy in the store, or any chocolate syrup, or some syrup that you make yourself. And if you find a good syrup recipe, make sure you post it in the comments here. Thank you for watching our video. You can always find our candies at www.pd.net. We're located right off I-10 in Tallahassee. If you ever want to come by, please come and visit. We make candy on a regular basis, and you can get a great New York egg cream or breakfast or 
play some games. We are a toy store too. We're an interesting shop. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. We're going for a million subscribers. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And once again, thank you for coming. And thank you for visiting Lofty Pursuits. We hope you have a good egg cream day. Greg's bow ties are provided by ties.com. Purveyors of great ties. Yep, we got a bow ties sponsorship. And a good one too.